baby! When I think about Chinatown, the first thing that comes to mind is all the food. I cannot imagine a New York without Chinatown. Chinatown businesses pretty much invented the word hero. It is the embodiment of the American dream. I think that's worth fighting for, don't you? Chinatown has just really been through the ringer. Since 9-11, really, this part of town just has been faced with one major change to the next. COVID hit Chinatown real bad. Of course, the Bradford of Kung Flu didn't help at all. During COVID, half of Chinatown wasn't qualified to apply for aid. Although media attention on all these anti-Asian hate crimes has died down considerably, that doesn't mean that they're not happening. I think the more these attacks happen, the less people come to these neighborhoods. We also have plans of a larger jail that's coming. So many businesses have been forced to shut down because their physical location is where the jail is going to be built. There is so much of what makes Chinatown unique. I go for things that I can't get at American supermarkets. So I'll like very specific herbs or vegetables. If I want the ingredients for a hot pot, I need to go to Chinatown to get those ingredients. Without a lot of these things, Chinatown just becomes another neighborhood in New York. So I hope that we're able to preserve the culture that has always made Chinatown what it is. Can I just get a veggie roll, please? Okay, sure. Five, please. Here you go. Veggie roll and a sauce. Awesome. Thank you so much. Thank have you. a good one. You too. Have a good day. I love having all my sauces. It's a rice roll must. And this, my friends, is the breakfast for champs right here. We have carrots, woodier mushroom, some scallions. It's very stretchy. I used to be embarrassed to eat this for breakfast. I was jealous. I was like, why can't I have Fruit Loops? But now that I'm an adult, why would I eat Fruit Loops? I got this. Send Chinatown Love is an organization that formed at the start of the pandemic. And the goal of our organization is really to provide relief for businesses in New York City's nine Chinatowns. A lot of businesses like Tony's didn't really have too many options for financial relief, especially in these ethnic enclaves where cash is such a big currency here, they don't really have banking relationships to apply for the PPP loan and all these other things that major American businesses had the privilege of. I knew that I had to do something. I was raised in this neighborhood and it felt strong to watch them crumble, you know? With Tony's, we started off with um, some of our fast financial relief programs, which involves building a small website for them to really reach more audiences. And it just gives them another way to tell their amazing story that I think really needs to be broadcast. I always describe Ling as my first son trying to tell love friend. She really inspires me because her family has a restaurant in Floral Park, and it just felt so good as well when Ling's parents agreed to work with us as merchants themselves. This is the kitchen. This is where my dad usually is. Hi. <laughs> Immediately after school, I would come to the restaurant because I need to make sure that I was at the business during rush hour. This is the chicken fried rice that my mom is making. You have to be really fast because if not, then when it gets really busy, there's just a really large backlog of orders. Well, you can't go wrong with a chicken with broccoli here. It's just a classic and it always hits with the white rice. Uh, Twang 
肯定是难的，但是我们为了一家呢，在这里，呃，生活呢，就说会更好一点，这是必须的。这个再苦，我们都会撑下去的。<laughs> so this is the kung pao chicken, which is a spicy diced chicken topped with peanut. The shrimp with garlic sauce. So you have um, the shrimp with a bunch of mixed vegetables like onion, celery, carrots, and pepper. 就是 COVID nineteen 的时候呢，这个整个社区这里全部都关了。然后我们也是几乎就也要关掉了，被迫关掉。I was part of the Sun Chinatown Love founding team, and we we're all brainstorming、um, what we could do to help these small businesses and bring these very small mom and pop businesses who are traditionally like very off the grid, no social media presence, no website, to the spotlight. I was very fortunate that I still had a job, but I was seeing my parents not have a job anymore, and this was their entire life. And so we set up a fundraising page for them on the Sun Chinatown Love website. We told their story, why they came here, what their motivation is for running a restaurant. So we would onboard these merchants, interview them, understand what their story was, and really tell their story to the world and let people know that they. Are such an integral part of our communities, and they shouldn't just be erased. And then we would basically try to fundraise as much as possible for this merchant. In this case, for my dad, and 100% of the donations go back towards the merchant. Another merchant is Jefferson Lee from 47 Division. We actually came across him because he wrote a very funny Reddit post. That Reddit post went viral. You want some of them dim sum ribs? Them itty bitty little tiny cuts of ribs, small, just like your feelings when your ex left you. Got them at three fifty nine a pound. My bread post was actually cooked up while I was on a, on a delivery on the box truck,、uh, the truck right out there, and I was just like, yo, like, what can we do to help out? How can I reach a larger demographic? I did not expect it to touch that many people. New York City is expensive. Every immigrant. Community is gonna go through the same struggle, so I saw that as a way out for them to keep feeding their families. Everybody wants to save money, bro. You got foot fetish.、Uh, I got some chicken feet right here, bro. This is、uh, what it's all about. You grow up the way you grow up, and you don't really think it's out of the norm until later on when you ask. Other people how they grew up, and they're like, "Oh shit!" Like you go to Disney World, or you go, you go on trips. I went to a farm. Like that was my trip to pick up shit. I would actually call this my primary home. I spent so much time here. When this is oxtail, I know all the Jamaicans watching this are、uh, getting pretty excited for that. Kido, liu tao. Okay. You miu tao ma. Okay, but I never really envisioned myself doing this. When you you're you're a kid of an immigrant family, you're fucking translating shit for them, or you learn how to hustle at a young age. My dad used to work here, but after 18-hour days, he'll drive a cab afterwards. As I got older, my parents got older too. They needed more and more help. Nobody wants the parents to work themselves down to the bone. The American dream to come up from nothing and to become something. You know, like Asians in America, we make up 5.6 percent of the population. Something like two thirds of us live at or below the poverty line. To other people's standards, this might fall short, but to us, this is representative of my family's struggle coming to to America. I think that's worth fighting for, don't you? From Saigon Social, I admire her so much. Helen's always been about using her skills and her ability as a new chef to give back to the community, which is so important for the future of Chinatown. This cyclical acknowledgement of knowing that I exist because people existed before me. Chai bin chao, chai bin chao. Today we actually have a group of seniors. These are typical patrons that come every week to pick up meals from our Morden Meal Program. Hello. 请坐，请坐。Oh, 
<laughs> These are members of the community that are in need of food service. We connect them to a nutritious meal, and Colin has been part of this um, project since the inception. There. So today we have three options. We have a um, salmon uh, raised with tomatoes, and then we also have lemongrass square ribs over rice, and then a chicken noodle soup, chicken pho. Now, she grew to Jonah. We grew to 40 years. Wow, 43 years. Wow. Through these conversations, like, hey, where do you live? And, and then they tell me, like, across the street. And so then it's just one person, then it's like 10, then it becomes dozens. When it comes down to it, food truly connects people. <laughs> More Than a Meal is a program that took a community approach to bringing New York back to life. And when people say, you know, we're, we're feeding people and we're solving food insecurity and hunger, that doesn't work without the buy-in of the whole entire community. Um, so what we're trying to do here is create a connection, introduce conversations, and break bread. Because when there's good food and good people around the table, magic happens. A lot of people think that, oh, hey, you, you do a lot for the community. You've, you've provided a lot of like support and assistance, but truly I feel like the community is, is the reason why I've been able to persevere so long throughout the whole entire pandemic. How are you feeling today? How are you feeling today? Very good. Very good. Extremely delicious. Very good. Delicious. It's so important to have that connection and that relationship with with your elders coming to a new country, starting all over, not knowing the language, the culture, and yet they're still able to, to stand and to persevere. There's a lot that we can learn from their strength and, and their values. So, why do you think it's very good? I think it's very very good. I think it's 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 I just did what I thought I needed to do because I think if the roles were reversed, my parents would have moved mountains to make sure I stayed afloat. And so I wanted to do what little I could to, to do the same for them. Send Chinatown Love, they were able to give us a voice. Our parents' generation, everybody else before them, they didn't know the language and they didn't really go outside of Chinatown. So it was more of like, just shut the fuck up, you know, keep your head down, grind out. We're the ones that are arrogant enough to be like, this is my home too, right? I'm not a guest. I'm not a guest here in New York City. I'm not a guest here in my, in my country. The other day, I was feeling so down from work, and I popped into one of my favorite restaurants in Queens to grab a bite, and the owner was the only one working there, and he provided me that moment of comfort during a time where he's probably struggling as well. Not everyone has the ability to do that, and that's why I think Chinatown Business owners, whether they have a supermarket or a pharmacy, they're all heroes at the end of the day because they're always going to put the needs of their community before themselves. This is an entire community that has been built through generations of immigration and families and love. It's part of what makes New York so great, in my opinion. And I think it would be a real, real shame if we lost that. Dropped off two bags for Winston and myself, and so cute. And then a card. Dear Helen, thank you for your kindness and generosity. Wishing you all the best. It's in English and in Chinese. <laughs>